Good morning, students. Welcome to day two. Summarizing the text. Hello, are we ready for day two of our lesson summarizing the text with details? If it is worth succeeding, continue to persevere. Objectives, 8.6i, summarize the text identifying supporting details. Vocabulary, barren, which means empty or deserted, frail, weak, fragile, or delicate, mistrust, to have no confidence in, presentable, fit to be seen by people, permit means to allow, latch is a verb and is a metal bob with a catch and love used for fastening a door or a gate. Tiger selection, thank you, ma'am. You have a snapshot today. The snapshot is, have you ever been called out by an elder for your behavior when you were younger? Or maybe you made a mistake and someone gave you a second chance. Write about your experience and share. Summarizing the text. How to summarize, read the text, don't let big words scare you, and ask what was this about. Summarizing the text with supporting ideas, why you summarizing, and we discussed this the other day. It helps students learn to determine essential ideas and consolidate important details that support them and enables students to focus on keywords and phrases of an assigned text that are worth noting and remembering. It teaches students how to take a large selection of text and reduce it to the main points for more concise understanding. What's the big idea? Summarizing the text. Learning objectives. Students will be able to write a three to four sentence summary on short story text. Introduction. Knowing how to summarize a short story of text is a skill that will help you in the future. Today we will practice identifying the main idea of a text to write a three to four summary of a text. Let's go summarizing. Review what is summarizing, why summarize, recognizing main ideas in the text. How many sentences do you write? Do we copy what the author has written? Discussion of what we've learned, teachers plus students. Let's practice. Today we will read and discuss the short novel, Thank You Ma'am by Langston Hughes. What is the main idea of this story? What does Langston want us to proceed. Before beginning the story, I will give you background history on Langston Hughes and the short story. Thank you, ma'am. Read the short story that you, read the short story, Thank You, Ma'am, by Langston Hughes. Read aloud with teacher the story, Thank You, Ma'am. 
Discuss the story and complete the exercises that the teacher will assign to you. Langston Hughes was a Harlem Renaissance poet. He was raised by his grandmother, Langston Hughes in full, James Mercer Langston Hughes. That's his whole name, his full name. He was born February 1st, 1902 in Joplin, Missouri, in the United States. And he died May the 22nd, 1967, in New York. He was an American writer who was an important figure in the Harlem Renaissance and made the African-American experience a subject of his writings, which range from poetry and plays to novels and newspaper columns. Short Story America, Thank You, Ma'am, by Langston Hughes. She was a large woman with a large purse that had everything in it but hammer and nails. It had a long strap, and she carried it slung across her shoulder. It was about 11 o'clock at night, and she was walking alone when a boy ran up behind her and tried to snatch her purse. The strap broke with a single tug the boy gave it from behind. But the boy's weight and the weight of the purse combined caused him to lose his balance. So instead of taking off four blasts as he had hoped, the boy fell on his back on the sidewalk and his legs flew up. The large woman simply turned around and kicked him right square in his blue jean sitter. Then she reached down, picked the boy up by his shirt front and shook him until his teeth rattled. After the woman said, pick up my pocketbook boy and give it here, she still held him, but she bent down enough to permit him to stoop and pick up her purse. Then she said, now ain't you ashamed of yourself? Firmly gripped by his shirt front, the boy said, yes. The woman said, what did you do? What did you want to do it for? The boy said, I didn't aim to. She said, you a lie. By that time, two or three people passed, stopped, turned to look, and some stood watching. If I turn you loose, will you run? Asked the woman. Yes, said the boy. Then I won't turn you loose, said the woman. She did not release him. I'm very sorry, lady. I'm sorry, whispered the boy. Mm-hmm. And your face is dirty. I got a great mind to wash your face for you. Ain't you got nobody at home to tell you to wash your face, oh, man? said the boy. Then it will get washed this evening, said the large woman, starting up the street, dragging the frightened boy behind her. He looked as if he were 14 or 15, frail and wool of wild, in tennis shoes and blue jeans. The woman said, you ought to be my son. I will teach you right from wrong. Least I can do right now is to wash your face. Are you hungry? No one said the being dragged, boy, I just want you to turn me loose. Was I bothering you when I turned that corner, asked a woman? No, ma'am. But you put yourself in contact with me, said the woman. If you think that that contact is not going to last a while, you got another thought coming. When I get through with you, sir, you are going to remember Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones. Sweat popped out on the boy's face and he began to struggle. Mrs. Jones stopped, jerked him around in front of her, put a half Nelson around his neck and continued to drag him up the street. When she got to her door, she dragged the boy inside, down a hall and into a large kitchenette furnished room at the rear of the house. She switched on the light and left the door open. The boy could hear other rumors laughing and talking in the large house. Some of their doors were open too. So he knew he and the woman were not alone. The woman still had him by the neck in the middle of her room. She said, what is your name? Roger, answered the boy. Then Roger, you go to that sink and wash your face, said the woman. Whereupon she turned him loose at last. Roger looked at the door, looked at the woman, looked at the door and went to the sink. Let the water run 
until it gets warm, she said. Here's a clean towel. You going to take me to jail? Asked the boy, bending over the sink. Not with that face. I will not take you nowhere, said the woman. Here I am trying to get home to cook me a bite to eat, and you snatch my pocketbook. Maybe you ain't been to your supper either, late as it be. Have you? There's nobody home at my house, said the boy. Then we'll eat, said the woman. I believe you're hungry or been hungry to try to snatch my pocketbook. I want a pair of blue suede shoes, said the boy. Well, you didn't have to snatch my pocketbook to get some shoes. Sway shoes, said Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones. You could have asked me. Ma'am, the water dripping from his face, the boy looked at her. There was a long pause, a very long pause. After he had dried his face and not knowing what else to do, tried it, dried it again. The boy turned around, wondering what next. The door was open. He could make a dash for it down the hall. He could run, 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 run. Woman was sitting on the day bed. After a while, she said, I were young once and I wanted things I could not get. There was another long pause. The boy's mouth opened. Then he frowned, but not knowing he frowned. The woman said, mm hmm, you thought I was going to say, but didn't you? You thought I was going to say, but I didn't snatch people's pocketbooks. Well, I wasn't going to say that. Pause, silence. I have done things too which I would not tell you, neither tell God if he didn't already know. So you sat down while I fix us something to eat. You might run that comb through your hair so you would look presentable. In another corner of the room behind the screen was a gas plate and an ice box. Mrs. Jones got up and went behind the screen. The woman did not watch the boy to see if he was going to run now, nor did she watch her purse, which she left behind her on the day bed. But the boy took care to sit on the far side of the room where he thought she could easily see him out of the corner of her eye if she wanted to. He did not trust the woman not to trust him, and he did not want to be mistrusted. Now, do you need somebody to go to the store, asked the boy, maybe to get some milk or something? Don't believe I do, said the woman, unless you want sweet milk yourself. I was going to make cocoa out of this canned milk I got here. That would be fine, said the boy. She heated some lima beans and ham she had in the icebox, made the cocoa and set the table. The woman did not ask the boy anything about where he lived or his folks or anything else that would embarrass him. Instead, as they ate, she told him about her job in a hotel beauty shop that stayed open late, what the work was like, and how all kinds of women came in and out, blondes, red hair, Spanish. Then she cut him a half of her 10-cent cake. Eat some more, son, she said. When they were finished eating, she got up and said, now here, take this $10 and buy yourself some blue suede shoes. And next time, do not make the mistake of latching onto my pocketbook nor nobody else. Because shoes come be devilish like that will burn your feet. I got to get my rest now, but I wish you would behave yourself some from here on in. She led him down the hall to the front door and opened it. Good night. Behave yourself, boy, she said, looking out into the street. The boy wanted to do something else than, the boy wanted to say something else other than, thank you, ma'am to Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones, but he didn't do as he, so as he turned at the barren stoop and looked back at the large woman in the door, he barely managed to say thank you before she shut the door and he never saw her again. Here's an activity that you're going to do called the News Hound Summary. What you're going to do, you're going to write facts from the selection on who, what, where, when, why, and how. Then you have your super sleuth summary. 
use the facts you uncovered and list above to write a one paragraph summary of the selection. Exit ticket. How does Roger most likely feel when the woman said, well, you didn't have to snatch my pocketbook to get some suede shoes? You could have asked me. Which character trait of Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones is essential to the storyline? In the beginning of the story, the woman refers to Roger as boy, but she begins to call him son when she gets him to her house. What does this suggest about the relationship between the two characters? So would your answer pause be A, B, or C? Until the next class lesson, continue practicing summarizing the text. Hasta la próxima.